In the vast chamber of the Galactic Concordat's central hub, High Counselor Zix Nareth's tentacles writhed with agitation. The holographic display before the assembled representatives showed a small, blue-green planet spinning slowly in the void. Esteemed colleague Zyx Nareth's melodious voice reverberated through the chamber. We have discovered a new sentient species in the outer rim of the Orion Arm. They call themselves humans. A ripple of curiosity passed through the assembled aliens. New species were rare, especially ones advanced enough for potential inclusion in the Concordat. Ambassador Kale Arnex of the silicon-based Petrovasians leaned forward, his crystalline form catching the light. What do we know of these humans? Zix Nareth's primary eye blinked slowly. They are puzzling, physically unremarkable, yet they've achieved spaceflight and rudimentary AI. But that's not what concerns us. The hologram shifted, showing images of human cities, technology, and finally, close-ups of humans themselves. Their adaptability is unlike anything we've encountered, Zix Nareth continued. They inhabit nearly every ecosystem on their planet. Hot, cold, wet, dry, it seems to make little difference. Murmurs of disbelief rippled through the chamber. Such adaptability was unheard of. Surely this limits their technological progress, Chief Scientist Elon of the hyper-intelligent Zorblaxians inquired, her brain case pulsing with skepticism. Quite the opposite, Zix Nareth replied. They've turned this adaptability into a drive for constant innovation. Their technology, while primitive by our standards, is advancing at an alarming rate. The images shifted again, showing human history wars, natural disasters, plagues. Yet after each catastrophe, humans seem to bounce back stronger. We propose a first contact mission, Zix Nareth announced. We must understand these humans better before they inevitably reach beyond their solar system. The chamber erupted in debate. Some argued for caution, others for immediate action. In the end, the decision was made. A delegation would be sent to Earth. Months later, on a secluded plateau in a region humans called North America, the sleek ships of the Concordat delegation descended from the sky. A group of carefully selected human representatives waited, a mix of anticipation and trepidation on their faces. As the aliens emerged, the humans gasped in awe. Creatures of all shapes and sizes, some defying description, approached with their own visible nervousness. Doctor. Sarah Chen, lead xenobiologist, stepped forward. On behalf of humanity, we welcome you to Earth, she said, her voice steady despite her racing heart. Zix Nareth extended a tentacle in what the Concordat's research suggested was a human greeting gesture. We come in peace, and with great curiosity the translator device conveyed. The initial meeting went smoothly, both sides exchanging pleasantries and basic information. But as the day wore on, the Concordat representatives began to notice something odd. High Counselor Chief Scientist Elon whispered urgently, the humans show no signs of distress from exposure to our various atmospheric requirements. Indeed, while each alien species required their own carefully calibrated breathing apparatus, the humans seemed perfectly comfortable in the unfiltered Earth air. More alarming still, when Ambassador Kale Arnex accidentally brushed against Dr. Chen, transferring some of the silicon-based microbes that covered his form, there was no adverse reaction. In fact, Dr. Chen didn't seem to notice at all. As the first contact meeting concluded, the human representatives were jubilant, seeing this as the dawn of a new era for their species. The Concordat delegation, however, retreated to their ships with growing concern. Back in orbit, Zix Nareth convened an emergency meeting. These humans, he said, his voice grave, they're not just adaptable, they're resistant to everything. Our pathogens, our environmental needs, nothing seems to phase them. Chief scientist Elon's brain case pulsed rapidly, it's as if their entire species has evolved to be a universal adapter. The implications are staggering. Ambassador Kale Arnex's crystalline form shimmered with unease. Are we looking at a potential threat to the Concordat? Zix Nareth's tentacles curled thoughtfully, perhaps. Or perhaps we're witnessing the emergence of a species that could change everything. We must proceed with caution. As the Concordat ships prepared to return home, the representatives couldn't shake the feeling that they had just encountered something unprecedented. 
On the planet below, blissfully unaware of the concerns they had sparked, humanity celebrated its first step into a larger galaxy. Little did either side know, this was just the beginning of a journey that would reshape the very fabric of galactic society. Five years after first contact, the Galactic Concordat's worst fears were being realized. On the bustling trade world of Zarkon Prime, High Counselor Zix Nereth watched in barely concealed alarm as a group of humans effortlessly navigated the crowded spaceport. They moved with confidence through the throng of diverse alien species, seemingly unaffected by the cacophony of atmospheric conditions that would have required most beings to wear protective suits. It's unprecedented, muttered Chief Scientist Elon, her brain case pulsing rapidly with agitation. In just five standard solar cycles, they've adapted to virtually every environment we've exposed them to. Zix Nereth's tentacles curled in agreement. Not just adapted, they're thriving. The decision to grant humans limited access to galactic society had been controversial, but few could have predicted the speed at which they would integrate and expand their presence. A commotion near one of the docking bays drew their attention. A human trader was haggling with a Petrovasian crystal merchant, their conversation a bizarre mix of standard galactic trade language and human idioms that the Petrovasian seemed to understand perfectly. They're even adapting our languages at an alarming rate, Elon observed. It's as if their brains are uniquely wired for rapid assimilation of, well, everything. As they watched, the human traders sealed the deal with a handshake, a gesture that the crystalline Petrovasian mimicked with surprising ease. It was a small thing, but it highlighted a disturbing trend. It wasn't just humans adapting to alien cultures, but alien cultures beginning to adopt human mannerisms. We need to return to the Concordat chambers immediately, Zex Nareth decided. This situation requires urgent attention. Back in the vast hall of the Galactic Concordat, the atmosphere was tense. Representatives from across the galaxy had gathered to discuss the human situation. Ambassador Kale Aranex's crystalline form shimmered with agitation as he addressed the assembly. Esteemed colleagues, the data is undeniable. Human presence in our galaxy is growing exponentially. They've established trading posts in 50 systems, unofficial embassies in over 100, and there are reports of human tourists in nearly every sector. Holograms flickered to life, showing statistics and projections. The line representing human expansion curved sharply upward, outpacing even the most aggressive predictions. But surely this is a good thing interjected a representative from the Aquilian Mercantile Guild, their fins fluttering nervously. Human adaptability has opened new trade routes, solved logistical problems that have plagued us for eons. Our profits have never been higher. Zix Nareth raised a tentacle for silence. At what cost? Reports are flooding in of human influence spreading far beyond mere trade. Alien species are adopting human cultural practices. Human languages are becoming common in sectors they've barely visited. It's as if. As if their infectious Elon finished grimly. Their ideas, their culture, their very essence, it's spreading through our galactic community like a virus. The chamber erupted in alarm chatter. Suggestions flew back and forth quarantine measures technology embargoes, even talks of more permanent solutions. Amidst the chaos, a new hologram flickered to life. A human face appeared, calm and collected despite the tension evident in the chamber. Steamed members of the Galactic Concordat the human ambassador began, her voice somehow cutting through the din. We couldn't help but notice your concerns about our presence in the galaxy. Zix Nareth's primary eye widened in shock. How had the humans tapped into this supposedly secure channel? The human continued, unfazed. We understand change can be frightening, but we assure you, our intentions are peaceful. We seek only to learn, to grow, to contribute to this vast and wonderful galactic community. As she spoke, more holograms appeared humans working alongside aliens to terraform barren worlds, human medical techniques saving species on the brink of extinction human art and music being embraced across the stars. We are not a virus, the ambassador said firmly. We are catalysts for progress, for innovation, for a new era of galactic cooperation. We invite you not to fear us, but to work with us. Together, there's no limit to what we can achieve. The transmission cut off, leaving the chamber in stunned silence. 
Zix Narath's tentacles writhed in a complex pattern of emotion, the human's words were compelling, their achievements undeniable. And yet... My fellow representatives, he said slowly, we stand at a crossroads. The galaxy as we know it is changing, faster than we ever imagined possible. The question is no longer whether we can stop this change, but how we will adapt to it. As debates raged anew in the Concordat Chamber, on countless worlds across the galaxy, humans continued to explore, to adapt, to innovate. The virus, it seemed, had no intention of being cured. And perhaps, some were beginning to think, that might not be such a bad thing after all. The Great Hall of the Galactic Concordat was packed to capacity. Representatives from every corner of the known universe had gathered for what many were calling the most crucial summit in galactic history. The topic humanity. I counselor Zix Nareth's tentacles were uncharacteristically still as he took the central podium. Esteemed colleagues, he began, his voice grave, we face an unprecedented crisis. The human influence has spread beyond our ability to control. We must decide, here and now, how to proceed. Holographic displays flickered to life, showing the extent of human expansion. Red dots representing human presence lit up across the galactic map like a stellar epidemic. In just 15 standard solar cycles, chief scientist Elon reported, her brain case pulsing rapidly, humans have established a presence in over 70% of known space. Their adaptability continues to defy our understanding. The assembly buzzed with a mix of fear and awe. Ambassador Kale RNX's crystalline form shimmered as he spoke up. It's not just their physical presence, human ideas, cultures, even their microbiomes are altering the very fabric of our societies. Entire species are evolving to be more human-like. Examples flashed across the displays Petrovasians developing flexible joints, Zorblaxians experimenting with emotion, even the aquatic Mirzai growing rudimentary lungs. We've tried quarantine measures, a representative from the Galactic Health Coalition added. Travel restrictions, information embargoes, nothing works. They always find a way through. As if on cue, the central display flickered and a familiar human face appeared. The same ambassador from the previous transmission smiled at the assembled aliens. Greetings, members of the Concordat, she said warmly. We apologize for the intrusion, but given the nature of this meeting, we felt it crucial to have a human voice present. Zix Nareth's tentacles writhed in frustration. How do they keep doing that, he muttered. The human ambassador continued, her tone serious but not unkind. We understand your fears. Change is never easy, especially on a galactic scale. But we ask you to consider not just the challenges, but the opportunities our presence brings. New images filled the display's barren worlds transformed into lush paradises through human terraforming techniques, previously incompatible species working together using human-developed universal translators, ancient conflicts resolved through human mediation. We are not a virus to be cured, the ambassador insisted. We are a catalyst for growth, for progress. Yes, we change the environments we inhabit, but we also adapt ourselves. We learn, we grow, we become better through our interactions with you. The chamber was silent, all eyes fixed on the human's earnest face. We propose a new way forward, she continued. Not isolation, not fear, but true cooperation. Let us share our adaptability, our innovation, our unique perspective. In return, we eagerly await the wisdom, the knowledge, the wonders that each of your species can teach us. As the ambassador's words hung in the air, an unexpected voice spoke up. It was a young Aquilian, her scales shimmering with excitement. I, counselor, esteemed representative, she began, her voice trembling slightly. I've had the privilege of working closely with humans over the past cycle. What they offer us is not extinction, but evolution. Not the end of our cultures, but a renaissance. Murmurs of agreement began to ripple through the chamber. More voices joined in, sharing stories of positive human impact, of problems solved, of new horizons opened. Zix Nareth's tentacles curled thoughtfully as he listened. Slowly, he raised them for silence. Fellow beings of the galaxy, he said, his voice carrying a new note of determination. Perhaps we have been looking at this all wrong. We've seen the humans as a virus, as invaders. But what if, what if they are the antibodies our galactic civilization needs? The idea hung in the air, radical yet somehow right. 
I propose Zykes Nareth continued, that instead of fighting this change, we embrace it. We work with the humans, guide them, learn from them, and yes, allow ourselves to be changed by them, not into copies of humanity, but into better versions of ourselves. The vote, when it came, was not unanimous. There were still those who feared, who wished to cling to the old ways. But the majority had seen the potential, had glimpsed a future brighter than they had ever imagined. As the summit concluded, the human ambassador was invited onto the floor, the first of her species to stand in the hallowed hall of the Concordat. She looked out at the sea of alien faces, some apprehensive, many curious, and a growing number excited. Thank you for your trust, she said, her voice thick with emotion. Together we will write a new chapter in the history of the galaxy. Not as separate species, but as a true galactic community. As the assembly dispersed, there was a sense of standing on the precipice of a new era. The human virus had not been cured. Instead, it had transformed the very nature of galactic civilization. The pandemic had become a pangalactic renaissance. And somewhere, on a small blue-green planet, in an unfashionable arm of the galaxy, humanity looked to the stars with wonder, unaware that they had just reshaped the destiny of an entire universe. Thank you for listening to this story. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe and leave it a like, and I'll see you in the next one.